My name is Remy, and I work as a strategist at, uh, at In The Pocket. Uh, we're a digital product studio uh, based of, uh, in Ghent, and we're a team of 85 uh, engineers, strategists, and product designers, all with a passion to create digital products that make people happy and businesses grow. Uh, the products that we build are, um, are mobile apps, chatbot and conversational interfaces, machine learning models, web apps and CMS, augmented reality and virtual reality app, and APIs and cloud native apps. And notice that IoT is not listed as a separate product. That's because we believe that IoT can be part of all, of all these different product offerings and thus is not listed as a separate product on its own. So, Internet of Things. What is the Internet of Things? Well, according to Wikipedia, the Internet of Things is a network of physical devices, such as vehicles, home appliances, and other items embedded with electronics, software, sensors, actuators, and connectivity, which enables these objects uh, to connect and exchange data. Each thing is uniquely identifiable through its embedded computer system, but is also able to interoperate with, exi uh, with existing Internet infrastructure. So it basically comes down to that, uh, that IoT has three major building blocks. First of all, there's a technology. This technology collects data, and this data can be, can be used to, uh, to create new products and services. But we believe that the true value of IoT is not necessarily in the technology as, as technology itself, because more often than not, these are fairly basic, uh, basic hardware components. But it's really in, in, in capturing the right data and leveraging that data in order to create new and innovative and disruptive products and services. So how can, I, can IoT be of value in the transportation and logistics uh, sector? Well, to give you a better understanding of this, I will go over a few cases of, uh, of companies that today are already very successful in implementing IoT, whether it be in the first part of collecting the cargo, uh, transporting the cargo, or uh, delivering it to the end consumer. So the first challenge is to get the, the items uh, at the right place at the right time in order to be picked up. Well, take for example, Schiphol Airport was also facing a similar challenge because to get luggage from, the, from and on the airplane into the airport, they use these types of, of manual carts. And more often than not, uh, management of, of the logistics management had no clue of where these carts were at the airport, whether or not they were used, or maybe even if they were broken or not. So you can imagine this forms a huge problem because they had no idea which cart was where. Um, and since we're talking about IoT, you're probably thinking, well, okay, just equip the cart with smart tracking sensors and problem solved. But uh, unfortunately, it was not as simple as that because you have to keep in mind, these manual carts have no power supply and for sensors, you need, you need a power supply to feed it. And you're operating at an airport, which is very much restricted in terms of which signals you can broadcast and which ones you can't. So Schiphol went very smart about this uh, problem and they equipped these cards with so-called GSE trackers. And what this actually is, these trackers can only communicate with the card that is closest to the card uh, to the other card. So for example, if you want to know data or want to know which, where card X is, card X communicates to the other card, to the other card, to the other card, until you get to the end nodes, so the control center, which results in um, a network of sensors that are very energy efficient and that also have a very local network so there's no disruptance with any other, um, any other signals in, in, the, in the airport. So as a result of this communication between the units, Schiphol Airport was, and, and IoT was able to know exactly which card was where at the airport, which luggage it was carrying and where it was going and where or not it was, was, was in use. And this is a fairly simple IoT case because um, this very much the, the, the problem is very much outlined. I mean, we were, uh, were at the airport, and this is an outlined premises, only the airport, with only one stakeholder, Schiphol Airport itself. So this is fairly simple, and unfortunately, not all logistics problems are like that. Take the port of Hamburg, for example. They're facing a rather big problem because they're located in city center and can't expand. It's projected that their traffic will increase from 9 million in 2013 to 25 million in 2025. Though, so that's a huge increase in, uh, in traffic. Moreover, the people who come, 
come in and out of the port are all different companies, different stakeholders, different wants and needs. And even though they collect data, the data is all in different formats and, and different styles. So it's very hard for the port of Hamburg to, on the one hand, manage the traffic that goes in and out of the port, and also how they could better serve their customers, being the different companies and different stakeholders. So let's take a look at how IoT has helped them in tackling this problem. The whole world is becoming responsive. Intelligent sensors can anticipate our needs. The Internet of Things is a game changer for the Port of Hamburg, with a goods turnover of 140 million tons each year. Numbers are expected to double by 2030, a serious challenge for the Hamburg Port Authority. Located right in the heart of the city, with limited space for expansion, to grow, the turnover of containers needs to be faster. The port has to ensure that trucks, ships, and containers are only in the harbor area when they are really needed. The Internet of Things brings the solution. Every component in the harbor is communicating with each other. Ships, trucks, people, cranes, bridges, and traffic control systems. Everything is providing data to give insight to the business. Trucks reach their destinations faster. Drivers know where to unload more quickly. Shippers can plan their tours proficiently and react to new challenges in real time. As a result, the port can handle more goods faster, simpler, and impact businesses way beyond harbor premises. So here you can see that uh, the port of Hamburg really made smart use of, of this data because they functioned as an aggregator for all the data that's coming in, 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 the, in the port in their system. They structured that data and then provided the, the right piece of data to the right stakeholder at the right time. So very, they made very smart use of, of all the, the data to tackle, their, uh, to tackle their problem. And even though this is still, um, this is fairly, Complex, uh, complex thing. It's still focused on one touch point in the entire supply chain, being the port itself. It's not focused on the entire supply chain or the entire journey. Um, and if you look at the companies such as uh, DHL, for example, with the Resilience 360 product, they're really looking at the entire supply chain. I mean, the DHL has a huge fleet of vehicles. All these vehicles collect data from all over the world, and they use that data to, uh, to have a supply chain risk monitor monitoring tool. For example, today we had the strike of the, of the taxi drivers. Things like this can be captured by the fleet and actually be implemented in that tool to know for a driver or for a logistics company to maybe uh, change the means of transportation or maybe change uh, the, the, the customer, customer expectation in terms of delivery. So you can really um, collect data on, on, for example, postal strikes or road closures or things like that. <laughs> things that are outside the supply chain, but that will impact the supply chain over the whole, uh, of the whole thing. So it's very interesting to see that, that, they, uh, have, that they use their very big fleet um, and leverage it to provide real information to the end consumer. So once the cargo has been, has, has been collected, it needs to be transported to the end consumer. And this is actually a challenging, uh, challenging job because for, uh, for truck drivers, they often work under time pressure and uh, they need to be focused 100% of the time. So how can IoT help them in being better at their job, being faster at their job, and most importantly, being safer at their job? For example, this uh, Volvo self-driving refuse truck is a very interesting case of um, how data and sensors uh, are used to help, to help the truck driver in performing better at their job. Imagine a world where everything that can be connected is connected. A more environmentally friendly world where emissions are reduced and safety improved. A world where automation is a natural part of any workplace. To us, it's reality.
Our refuse truck manages obstacles in a more accurate and safer way, as it never gets distracted by emotions or stress, and have a far better surrounding view. Relevant data is relayed to the driver in real time to enable route optimization. Using automation like this will substantially reduce environmental impact and contribute to a more efficient and safer society for everyone. So here you can see, um, on the one hand, we have technology, smart sensors, to maneuver through the, through the environment and to avoid collisions and avoid obstacles, on the one hand. And on the other hand, use the data collected by the truck to better inform the driver itself. So it's an interesting communication between the machine, the truck driver, and the user, the, pe the person who is in the truck, to, be, to help them to better perform at their, uh, at their job. But it can also be that the truck collects data and then gets communicated not to the truck driver itself, but to uh, the manager to management who managed the entire fleet and uh, already talked about it, uh, Dyna Fleet, which is also an interesting uh, IoT case, because uh, with Dyna Fleet you can collect data on fuel consumption of each, of each driver, uh, monitor driving times and get accurate location and cargo information that can be sent uh, over to, to um, through an API can be integrated in third-party ERP software. So here we see in, an interesting uh, application of how we can use data collected by a machine, by a truck, not only to the driver itself, but also to the management. And it can even be one step further, not, not only to a person, but to machine to machine. For example, you're all familiar with the Tesla auto, Autopilot, the self-driving car. Well, um, if Tesla, if you're driving with autopilot, and for example, you see a big road sign, and the, the, the Tesla is not sure whether or not it's a road sign or a roadblock, it uses uh, information from other Teslas, so these machines connect, uh, talk to each other, um, to know whether or not if a, a significant amount of Teslas has driven over the same road, it knows, okay, this is a road that I can drive through, and thus the autopilot will uh, will continue to drive. So it's very interesting uh, to have this machine-to-machine -machine communication as well. So once you're driving along, you can still can encounter problems. For example, um, if your machine breaks down, if your car breaks down, if your truck breaks down, um, this can cost a lot of time and thus a lot of money. And here we see with the Rio, uh, Rio Tinto, which is a mining company, that they make smart use of IoT in order to save cost by just avoiding a breakdown, of avoiding a mechanical uh, failure. So the fleet, um, the fleet of trucks, you see these huge mining trucks, collect almost five terabytes of data per day, data that they use together with predictive analysis to make an assessment or whether or not a, a truck will break down. And even before this event happens, they can fix it on site and thus save them time and money and can be very efficient use of, of IoT technology to, to be more efficient and to be better at their job. So, and Volvo is, is working on a similar concept um, that collects data from, uh, from, from all Volvo trucks, uh, which allows for real-time monitoring and anticipating on potential breakdown. And they also uh, get a health report, so it's a very smart uh, use of technology to, to prevent problems before they even, before they even occur. So, once you have picked up um, and you've transported your, uh, your cargo, it needs to be delivered to the end consumer. And most often, this, uh, the, the last mile, as they, they call it, is often the most challenging one. And especially due to, uh, to companies such as Amazon, um, customer ex expectations are changing. And people, if you, if you buy something today, um, people expect it today or tomorrow at least. Um, so if we, for example, look, look at Amazon, what they do is they collect a huge amount of data from, from your fridge, for example, but then also from the platform, and they can predict whether or not you will buy something. And if the likelihood that you will buy something is fairly high, for example, you want to buy razors and you live in the United States, your razors are being produced in Texas, but you live in Alaska, 
they will send those razors to Alaska even before you, you click that buy button. So they really use that predictive analysis um, to know whether or not you're going to buy that product based on the data that they collect through their platform and to all other smart, uh, smart devices. So, and if, if you did eventually click that like button and uh, buy button and um, your product comes over and, and, and uh, the truck driver ships it to your door, um, there will be a chance that you're not, not home. Here again, Amazon, very interesting, interesting company in terms of, uh, of IoT, has, um, has introduced a product called Amazon Key. And what it does, it's a smart lock that's on your door with a camera. And if, uh, if, if the truck driver is near your, near your house, you get a notification on your smartphone if you're not home. And then you can see, you can okay, start, and you can see through the camera your front door. And then the truck driver, he scans the, the barcodes of the, of the parcel and then holds to the smart lock. And then it knows through the cloud, okay, this parcel is for this address. And then the door unlocks. And then the, 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 the truck driver can just walk into your house. You can see it from a distance. You can monitor, it in, monitor him and even talk to him because it has two-way audio. So very interesting use case of IoT on how to, uh, to be better efficient at uh, delivering parcels. So. Um, these are all very, very uh, interesting cases of companies that are, that are uh, implementing IoT. And may seem complex, but um, I'll go over uh, IoT, where, where should you start? I'll go over four tips that are basically a bit of the four commandments of, of in the pocket. First of all, you need to start with needs. You need to define a bigger picture and define your digital roadmap, uh, based, very important, based on customer needs on the one hand, and your business needs on the other hand, and make sure that they, uh, that they are very well aligned. Then deploy or die. Don't be afraid to, to ship your product. Take your digital product from idea to launch and go for best in class product design and engineering. And even though I say, okay, don't be afraid to, to, to build and ship fast, you need to have your end goal in mind. So you need to set clear business goals. You, you need to set uh, clear business goals from the start that allows you to monitor and grow your product before your initial release. And then make sure that you have a small and multidisciplinary disciplinary team to guarantee a smooth col collaboration, high focus and optimal ownership. So make sure that this team is empowered to make a change. And most importantly, just get started. Thank you.